Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Uh, it is here. We are just about here. It is certainly. Absolutely binge watching uh, Tiafimo Lopez fight, right? Because you know, we, we've been watching Loma at the highest level for for years now. Uh, but we've already, you know, we've seen Tiafimo against an increasingly, you know, a, a rising level of opposition. But we haven't seen him outside of Kome. We haven't seen him at a world class level. The Kome fight, he absolutely blew blew Kome out. Um, so I, I don't know that that's a great gauge to see how he's going to respond. Um, we put up an article on 3D Boxing Blog, uh, 3DBoxingBlog.com, on how this fight may go, our, our prediction. Uh, so you can go over there, 3DBoxingBlog.com, and check that out. But, but let's get into it. This is going to be an extremely competitive fight. I had a Twitter debate with someone. This, if you think this fight's going to be one-way traffic, one way or the other, you're out of your mind. This is such a close, such a competitive fight. Um, today on AFC, our podcast, um, my, my co-host, Matt the Hipster Hunter, uh, was kind of comparing it, uh, this fight to the usyk Garcia fight. And that's not a terrible comparison, except Lopez isn't just a puncher, right? I mean, he's incredibly fast. He has incredible reflexes. Um, I mean, he, he just... He, He's so violent in there. He's so quick and so violent. There's really no way to respond to him. Um, on the other hand, Vasil Lovachenko is the matrix. His foot speed, his punch output, his hand, his footwork, his hand speed, uh, his punch output, his relentlessness um, is is kind of unique right now, right? Like like there's no one else out there quite like Loma that we've seen. Loma's a three weight division champion. He's accumulated a ton of belts. Um, and, and T.P. Lopez is the upstart. He is the best youngster in the sport. You know, if Dame guys under the age of 25, Lopez is the best. Um, this is all the makings of it. If Lopez wins, he's a star. If Lopez beats Lomachenko on ESPN in front of millions of viewers, he's a star. No question about it. Um, Loma's star is kind of, you know, he's a draw to a degree. He's he's big with the hardcores. He's got some casual appeal, not much. You know, his numbers are steady. Lopez is a star. Lopez's personality is a star. Uh, there's That's it. You know, Lopez, all he needs is to start making performance. I mean, he got that against Kome. Not the biggest name. Uh, Kome's a tough guy. I picked Kome to win, so I'm not going to act like that's not anything. You know, I thought Richard Kome was going to beat him. I thought it was a, a bridge too far too soon in the development of Tiafimo Lopez. It was not. So let's get into it. How do I see the fight going down? Um, Tiafimo Lopez is the better boxer. If this is a pure chess match, I mean, I'm sorry. Let me rewind that. I'm sorry. Vasil Lomachenko is the better boxer. Vasil Lomachenko is the better all-around boxer. If this is a high-speed chess, if this is, you know, a pure boxing match, Tiaf- uh, Vasil Lomachenko wins. Tiafimo can't let that happen. I think he knows that. 
Uh, TFP Mo, I've, like I said, I've been binge watching his fights. He does not use his jab enough. He's going to have to get that going. If he doesn't, Loma might be able to get in and out on him and run up some rounds. Uh, I think the beginning of this fight is going to be explosive. Um, I, I think Lopez's best chance is to knock him out in the first half of the fight. Now, he's got the ability to do it, right? He's so explosive, and he's so violent with his, with his punches, especially his hook. Is his left hook, but he leaves himself open to be counted. The problem is you have to be so precise and so perfect to get in and out on him that you run yourself in a major risk of getting caught one of those, right? Like Diego Magdaleno is a left-hander. Um, he's not Lomachenko. He's lefty, and, and Tio was making a ton of mistakes in there. Like, I, you know, just – he was not. He, he he's constantly going right, going right. He wasn't going left. He you know he wasn't throwing a, a bunch of, you know, lead right hands like he should. Um. But he's so athletic and so gifted that he gets away with it. Will he get away with it against Lomachenko? That's a different story. Um, Loma's got to do what what Teddy Atlas always says: get him in, uh, hit him coming and going. Right? He's got to jump in. He's got to hit him. He's got to pivot. He's got to use that footwork. He's got got to get out of there, uh, and hit him on the way out. And make sure he doesn't get hit and return fire because he can't trade shots with Tiafimo Lopez. Tiafimo Lopez, if, if they trade shots, this fight's over, right? The like, Tiafimo is going to get rid of him. Um, we've not seen Tiafimo really get tested. He got tested a little bit in that Nakatani fight, and there was some good and bad in that. Uh, Nakatani's not a bad fighter. He's long, he's tall, and he he gave him some troubles. But ultimately, Tiafimo outclassed him, carried the round, was probably the worst performance we've seen from Lopez. That being said, he won a one-sided decision against a decent fighter. Um, but he never really adjusted. We've seen Lomachenko adjust. Every guy, every real guy Lomachenko has fought at 135. That's Pedraza, that's Lenores, uh, Pedraza, Lenores, and Campbell. They've all tested him in spots, right? They've all hit him. They've all made him adapt. And he's been able to do pass that as, pass and adapt every single time, come back, either finish the guy, drop the guy, or hurt him real badly in each one of those fights. So the longer this goes, I think the longer, the more and more it favors Vasil Lomachenko. I think Lomachenko can figure things out, um, and he can carry the late rounds. The problem is, can he get to the late rounds? That's what we're asking here, and, that, and that's what I'm going to try to answer. I, I think he does. I think the beginning of this fight, the first five rounds of this fight, is fireworks. I think Lomachenko gets dropped. I think he gets hurt several times, but I think he gets through it. I don't think he loses all the rounds. Right? I think you know. Um, Five, six rounds in, he's won a couple rounds, but he's behind on the scorecards, and he's been dropped, and he's been hurt. But then he figures it out. He comes out of it, right? He adjusts while Lopez is still going 100 miles an hour, right? And he counters it. He uses Lopez's aggression against him, starts to really outpoint him, put the combinations together, frustrates him. By the end of the fight, I think he wins enough rounds. I think uh, him being Vasily Lomachenko puts it all together, wins enough round off the jab, off the combination, of coming in, scoring with a bunch of shots, and getting out and frustrating Lopez. I think he wins enough round. When you go back and you look at the fight, I think you're going to say, wow, Lopez landed the better shots. But he didn't win enough rounds. You know, I, I think it's going to be that kind of fight. I think, you know, we're going to look at this and say, okay, Loma won this fight clearly. Um, you know, not clearly, decisively. He won this decisively. I don't think there'll be a lot of debate. I think Loma, uh, sorry, Loma will win the fight decisively. Loma will win enough rounds. He'll put enough 10-9 rounds in the bank to carry the day. I, I do think Lopez will have lots of moments early in the fight. I think he'll drop. Lopez will drop Lomachenko. I, I think a lot of people are going to be oohing and on. And then that matrix, right, that high tech will kind of figure it out. He'll start to frustrate. He'll, he'll turn the tables in the second half of the fight. He'll start to frustrate Lopez, um, and he'll carry the day on just 10-9 rounds and, and getting through. And we'll be looking at a decision, you know, 115, you know, 115, 112, something like that, 116, 111 uh, for for, T, uh, for Lomachenko. So I, mean, I got Vasil Lomachenko by clear but unanimous, uh, you know, unanimous but competitive decision. Um, but this is the fight we've been waiting for. I really think of all the real makeable fights, right, makeable fights in their same weight class. So no, no jumping weight classes and no unrealistic fights. So put Bud versus spent to the side for just a minute. I really think this is the best fight that can be made. You got the two best guys in their weight class, still on their prime. Loma's only 32. And so he's still in his physical prime. He's still going to have the punch out, but he's not going to fade. 
And Tiafima Lopez is just entering his prime. If this fight's two years from now, it's probably a completely different story, but it's not it's right now. Um, and I, I think still at this point, I think Loma has plenty in the tank, and Lopez hasn't gotten to that point. And I could be wrong. This, like, again, this is kind of 50-50. I can see this fight going either way, but I have to get on the record, so I'm going to say Vasily Lomachenko by unanimous decision. Let me know what you think. Please leave your predictions below. Leave your thoughts, comments, predictions. Let me know what you think of mine. I, I really want to see because I, I can see this fight going either way. I can make a clear-cut path to victory for both guys. I'm going with Loma. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, also, go to MCR Podcast. Listen to the full show that me and Matt do. We're going to do a post. I'm going to uh, be on again on MCR Podcast Sunday, uh, Saturday night after the fight to uh, review this fight and see if I was right or wrong. Um, follow me up on social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.